Today I'd like to talk with you a little bit about scales and why they're important and give you a few tips on how to practice them. I know that as I talk with many students they uh, dread learning scales because some of the fingerings are very complicated and it seems like a very dry approach to learning music. However, we need to remember that scales are the building blocks of music and without scales we don't have music. So it's kind of like without oxygen we aren't able to breathe and live. So the scales are the lifeblood, the oxygen of our music. I have, some, I have some general comments that I just want to remind you of as you are practicing scales and as you're just practicing in general. Number one, be patient. It takes time to learn music. It takes time to learn scales. So continue to do the right things day after day, practice session after practice session, and you will get better and notice improvement. Also, especially with scales, memorize them. Memorize them so that they are muscle memory, they're ear memory, uh, and in our case with trumpet, they are lip memory, that it just feels right and you don't have to think about it. This will help us learn music much more quickly and much more thoroughly. Also, specifically for the trumpet, make sure that as you are learning the scales, you bang the vowels down very deliberately. This will instill confidence in your fingerings. Now let's move on and talk a little bit about some different uh, processes we can go through to learn scales. And the very first step is just to understand key signatures. Now I'm not going to go into a music theory lesson here, um, but just in general, make sure you are aware of what the different flats and sharps mean and how they alter the different notes. As you are learning the scales, <clears throat> our second step is to um, finger the scales very slowly and say audibly the note name that we are fingering. So let's take the uh, written key of E flat major. So that has three flats in it. So the key signature is going to be B flat, E flat, and A flat. So B flat is first valve in every octave. E flat in the fourth space is second valve on the first line is two and three and then a flat which is two and three in every octave so i'm going to finger through that e flat major scale and say the names out loud so e flat f g a flat b flat c d e flat d c b flat a flat g F, E flat. And you may spend a couple of days or weeks doing just that. And you can put a metronome on and slowly in increase that metronome speed uh, at doing, a, uh, doing those in quarter notes or whatever. But just thinking, connecting the key signature with the valves and the note names, audibly saying those things. Once you feel very comfortable with that step, then we move on to doing virtually the same thing, but with an air pattern. So instead of saying the note names, we're going to use a wind pattern. So again, I have my metronome on and go. Once I'm comfortable with that, I will then add in the uh, pattern that uh, the rhythmic pattern that I like to use. So, for example, again, it may take a few weeks for you to be able to go that fast, or maybe you're able to do that now, which would be great. Um, so then, sort of our final step here is to alternate doing three times on air and then three times on the trumpet. So I'll do that wind pattern on the air and fingering being very deliberate with my vowels. So I'll do that three times um, on air and then I'll do it three times on the trumpet. Once you feel very comfortable with that, you can again slowly increase the metronome speed so that you are no longer thinking of the scale uh, specifically from note to note, but it has just become muscle memory and second nature, like saying your ABCs. Now that we've talked about the basics of how to learn your scales, 
Here are a few bonus tips that will help add variety to your practice. First, I like to isolate the parts of the scale that give me trouble. So if the ascending portion is giving you trouble, practice just the ascending portion. And then you can add it to the second half, the descending portion. Now let's say you're having difficulty with just the beginning of the scale. Well then play just the first beat by itself. Then play the second beat of the scale. Then you can put those two parts together. And then you can continue in the same manner with the descending portion. So you've basically broken that one octave scale into four parts and are doing each part of it individually and then piecing it together with the following part. Another uh, practice technique for scales is what I like to call the plus one method, where we're just adding one note at a time and doing that several times in a row and then adding the next note. So let me demonstrate. It's a little bit easier to understand with the demonstration. You get the idea and you can continue all the way up to the full octave or if it's two octaves, do that. With this particular method, I recommend that you do it several times on air and then do it on the trumpet because it does get a little bit taxing on the chops. And you may only want to do half the scale and then rest and then continue with that process. Um, another way, which is a little bit of a different way to practice your scales, um, just to get you to think about it a little bit differently and to focus mentally a little bit more is to use your left hand. So practice the scales with your left hand. You would never perform them this way, but this is just a way for you to uh, think about them, kind of look at them in a different, different light and focus a little bit more on what your fingers and your mind is actually doing. And then you go back over to the right hand and it becomes much easier. <clears throat> now, lastly, Remember that our scales you know, show up in music all the time, but every once in a while when you're taking private lessons and, you, and you're maybe doing your end of the semester jury if you're in college, you'll have to perform your scales. So in the practice room, I recommend that you spend time performing your scales, giving yourself only one shot at playing that scale correctly. You can even record yourself and grade yourself as, it, as your teacher would grade you. But make sure you practice performing, whether it's your etudes and solos, or your scales, and that will give you confidence when you walk into that performance situation. Good luck and have fun.